Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here with Will Harris from Autodesk. Welcome, Will. Hi, Randy. Thanks for having me. Sure. Well, it's NAB time, so I figured we need to be we need to be speaking about product at least. Um, it is it's April. We have to talk about product. Yeah. No, it's that time of year. It's just it's a funny year this year, but uh, but I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. But we're still shipping software, so that, that doesn't stop us. We yeah. Just have a longer cable. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, because it is sort of an AB time frame, you guys typically start rolling out your global product launches in, in March, and that started with 3ds Max. That's right. And, yep. And now you're going. You're here to talk about Flame 2021. That's right. So, yeah. We, um, well, what's what's new? Why don't you start running down some of the stuff that's that's new and cool? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I remember talking to you last year about kind of a, a big a big event for us back at NAB last year was the launch of our AI or machine learning tools inside of Flame where we we added new ways of isolating faces and human body and then later in the year around SIGGRAPH time we added more semantic keys for isolating sky and then closer to IBC uh, you know just six months ago we added more and more things to do with um, actually sort of getting close to rotoscoping people and heads out of images. So like a sort of a pro version of what we, we see with our virtual back, backgrounds, everyone knows what that is now on Zoom, uh, that, that technology as, you know, is, is shipping there in, in flame for a year um, and at, you know, at a, a high quality. <laughs> but, um, but, but we've continued down that road. So we're, we're actually adding in Flame 2021, which is going to ship uh, in two days on April 16th. Uh, we're, we're adding um, the ability to isolate parts of the human face. So cheeks, forehead, nose, lips, eye sockets, eye bags, um, and get you mats for moving faces in video that are quite accurate uh, based on our face uh, recognition uh, training. Uh, that's one that's one big thing for us um, another thing that we've added has been um, a, a lot a, a highly requested new GPU defocus effect so that's like the ability to add depth of field rack defocus in a shot that didn't have it um, so so that's been it was one of our hottest requests from our users and uh, it took some research in itself to be able to deal with like uh, foreground softening, where you have an out of focus foreground element that needs to be kind of blurred and mixed with the background. That that's a bit, been a big challenge, but we I think we finally nailed it with a GPU accelerated physical defocus, and as well as working with like CG renders where you have a depth generated, that can work in combination with our AI generated depth for live action scenes. So you can actually artificially add like rack defocus to shots that are, are clean and not you know not defocused at all so that that's that's a good one for us um and then there's there's more but do you have any questions on that so far um not that so far but i know that one of the other announcements was the dolby hdr yep no, so can you dig into that yeah that that's been an interesting one it's it's it was something where we realized yeah, during the year last year that Dolby was really taking the lead as the standard and sort of becoming synonymous with HDR mastering um, out there and seeing the streaming form, the streaming uh, mediums adopting Dolby. So we jumped on it and we put a big team within our team on uh, Dolby Vision support, the authoring and editing. Uh, and we thought that Flame could be quite a special player in that scene, where most of the, the tools that, that already have Dolby, uh, Dolby Vision support, are, are, are kind of just grading tools. In other words, they work you know, shot to shot, they, they chop it up and they'll give you a kind of a shot-based way of thinking about Dolby Vision, which is certainly the, the first way to approach it. But in Flame, we have a, a multi-layer timeline. So that means that we can understand, you know, titles, graphics, blending, um, layered, multiple layers, all interacting with each other. And, um, and that gives us a kind of an editorial edge to handling Dolby metadata. So that means, for example, that we can treat 
there'll be metadata like kind of gap or adjustment effects that could spam the normal edit or could uh, deal with things like a, a time warp that comes down to normal speed and then continues on. Whilst that's two events in editorial, Flame can think of that as one and treat it with one set of Dolby metadata so you don't get a color pop or a, a jump. And then you can deal with things like changing a dissolve to a wipe, um, changing that and reanalyzing that in Dolby, dealing with you know, um, sort of complex re-editing re of Dolby metadata if you change that graphics. So it becomes what we hope will be a sort of a de facto tool for dealing with problems and solving problems with Dolby um, in that finishing stage when you're making last minute changes to edit, adding five second black slugs, doing all the stuff that equals the kind of the last part of the finishing stage um, and still being able to output accurate Dolby metadata. I bet so that's was, what we're up to there. <laughs> was that highly requested as well? It was by a certain class of user. Uh, you can imagine that people that are doing, that are shifting and, and jumping into episodic work for streaming, this is their number one request. Other, other Flame users out there probably are not as, as kind of familiar with Dolby yet, but we think that they will be. We think that more and more kind of pure VFX content will start being output through episodic. So the need for understanding what it's going to look like is going to start creeping upstream. Gotcha. So um, obviously a lot of people were, were sort of made to start working remotely in the world. Yep. Um, can you talk about how your products are sort of built to help them? And also what, what do you see um, in terms of trends that are coming up? Yeah, the, the whole working remotely thing, I think we've all got you know, suddenly jolted into it these last few weeks, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's something that, you know, it's no small challenge in post-production when you've got terabytes of media and people that, you know, collaborate naturally by getting together in one room. Uh, we, we've seen all kinds of uh, in, innovations, people doing everything from sort of team viewer to Zoom to, um, you know, to screen box type experiences. We've even seen, uh, you know, we even have some customers that, that have a Teradici um, PC over IP infrastructure, as well as uh, HP RGS. Uh, so like the, the remote boost, as they call it. Um, and, and people are, are using all of the above. Um, it's just, uh, I mean, it, it's challenging in terms of um, you know, being able to, I think the, the challenging part is being able to collaborate with lots of people when you're all, when you're all, you know, you can't lean over and, and explain the nuance of something like you can in person in, a, in an office or, or, you know, collaborative environments. But, but certainly, you know, our customers are, are doing it. I, I do think that that's a, a trend that, a trend that will emerge is people will realize that it's maybe, you know, it's more, realistic than they thought, you know, the speed of the internet, the speed of access is, is getting better and people might start building more remote and, you know, international collaboration, maybe freelancers, people that are not in the big cities. I, I think that that may be the, the long-term effect here is that that will get more built into people's planning. It's actually a nice change though. Because you could you could bring in artists and talent from all over the place, and um, and they don't have to be in the same office, which really opens up the world creatively. Yeah, no, and I, I think I mean I think it speaks well to to people that are already starting to do collaboration. I mean, we have a product called Shotgun that allows you to to do that, uh, you know, in in VFX especially. But I could see it I can see it getting bigger. I can see um, whether it's just using like a Dropbox type thing to, to sync your media, or ultimately I could see people doing their full post uh, studios on AWS or Azure and, and be, being sort of flipping the whole, the whole mindset from all the medias here on physical hard drives to eventually the media will be on the cloud first, right? And then it will be a matter of bringing bringing the software to it and running it in place in a data center. And you're just watching the streaming pixels until the very final deliverable. I, I think ultimately that will start happening over time. 
It's very interesting. There's uh, interesting times ahead. Uh, yeah. Before I let you go, I just want to, so Flame, Flare, and Flame Assist are all, they're all available now. That's correct. They're, they, they're becoming available, yeah, April 16th. If you're watching this after that, they're already available, version 2021. Um, the other things we didn't mention, we've been continuing to improve our effects tab environment. That's our integrated color grading and effects uh, place in Flame. It's getting pretty cool now. We've added like a kind of a grade bin concept, a place to, to store your effects. Uh, you can do background rendering in there and you know, it's, it's getting pretty slick. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for, for educating us on what's going to happen with, with Autodesk at um, the non-NAB time. And, yep. um, <laughs> and it, was, it was great talking to you again. And you. Thanks, Randy. Uh, I'll be in touch. Take care.